The first thing you notice when you enter the Montrose Point Bird Sanctuary is the sound. Then, the people. But if you look where they're looking, that's when the real magic begins. This is spring migration. Millions of birds are flying north using the Lake Michigan shore as a guide. And a lot of them stop here at Montrose. Among the avid birders here are many photographers. And perhaps the king of Montrose photographers is Rob Curtis. Rob's been coming to this 13-acre Chicago Park District bird sanctuary for 30 years. I mean, yesterday I was here 11 hours, and a day before, two, 12 hours on that big day. Oh, I see a hummingbird right up in oh, there. Oh, yeah? Let's see if I could get there. During spring migration, it's not uncommon to see more than 100 species in a day at Montrose. More than 300 have been seen in all, and Rob's photographed most of them. Well, the biggest thrill for all of us was a morning warbler, a male morning warbler. Yellow belly, gray head, gray bib, with a black outline at the bottom of the bib. Warblers seem to be a favorite during spring migration. As many as 39 types of warblers have passed through here. They come from as far south as South America. A few will nest in the Chicago area, but most continue to Wisconsin or Canada. And the birds aren't the only ones traveling long distances. Well, I just talked to a woman from Belgium. Montrose is a world-famous bird stop. Montrose Point sticks out into the lake, which makes it a handy resting spot for exhausted and hungry birds making their way up the shoreline. From the 1950s to the 70s, Montrose Point was home to a Nike missile base like this one. Then, before it was a bird sanctuary, it was kept nicely groomed, though that's better for people than birds. But there was always this stretch of bushes and trees that came to be called the Magic Hedge, because it seemed to attract birds like magic. But they would have to leave in the middle of the day because there wasn't that much here for them in terms of food. Judy Pollock has been birding here since the 80s, She's also a bird habitat consultant. She and others worked with the Park District to make Montrose more bird friendly. If you look around, you see the kind of plantings that birds need. There's a lot of different species, a lot of diversity, so you have things flowering at all different times. The flowers attract insects, the insects attract uh, the birds. And then the other thing that birds really like is layers. So the vegetation is in layers. You've got ground cover, you've got shrubs, you've got understory trees, you've got canopy trees, and that's just uh, great for birds. What was once a lawn has become this wild meadow, and the beach now has dune grasses, making it more appealing to shorebirds. The ruddy turnstone is one, the sanderling is one, willet is another one that you see kind of commonly on the beach. To measure the success of these habitats, Judy and other volunteers are out here most days counting the birds. They spend five minutes in each of eight locations. Their results will help determine future changes to the plantings. And there is another surprising reason so many migrating birds are seen in Chicago and other big cities. Judy says they're attracted to the light. And so they are actually finding that there are more of these migratory birds in cities um, than there are like out in the country, which is kind of counterintuitive. Sometimes it seems there are as many types of birders as birds. Some are looking for that rare species to add to their life list. Others just want to spend time with the birds in a natural habitat while others wait for a new angle or a different light or behavior to capture and share. As migrating birds take this glorious and cacophonous break on Chicago's lakefront. <laughs>